I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials come on a I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> First, thank you to Carol for nominating me for this prestigious award. And thank you to the committee for selecting me. And I was thinking about this as I was sitting there in the chair. my journey from the cotton fields of Georgia to many, many turns, Anchorage, Alaska. And who would have thought that I, my journey would bring me to this place? I was raised by my grandmother in rural Georgia who had an ethics of working hard and never giving up. And if I look at my life, that has been my mantra. Giving up has never been a choice. The other thing about me as I was growing up in rural Georgia, I was always curious. I was curious about people, places, and things. And it has been that curiosity that's been the driving focus for my peeking in windows and seeing the possibilities, not just for my life, but for the lives of people that I have the honor to come in contact with. How did cross-cultural, how did this notion that people need to get to know each other became important to me. And a part of my life mission, I don't know all of the answers to that. When I, I left Georgia and went to New York and there was a Jewish man, Mr. Rubenstein, who saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And he gave me an application to the first group of VISTA volunteers that went out into America to make a difference. He said to me, you have something to give. I didn't know it, but he saw it. And I took that application and filled it out and ended up in Mount Angel, Oregon, where there were two black people, <laughs> and learned about migrants migrating up from Texas picking harp. And I was trained in community development and went on to New Mexico, Las Vegas, New Mexico, and spent my year as a VISTA volunteer, again in community development. 
Well, would I know that 22 years later, I received my BA degree from Alaska Pacific University in, <laughs> this is collective memory, human resource development. <laughs> after receiving the AA degree in human services. So what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about pe presenting possibilities for people to find the commonalities. And we meet in that place of commonality and make a difference in the world. And not only in the world, in the country. And not only in the country, in our cities. And not only in our cities, in our villages. Because when we come together on our commonalities opposed to our differences, we can make a difference. And my work has been about that. Not that I have been able to do this alone. I have the most amazing people in my life that say yes. When I call, maybe they don't want to say yes, but they, <laughs> but they say yes. And it has always been that way. From, no, it was, Jane, did you go to Africa with me? Yes. <laughs> the first group of women that I took to the uh, United Nations Conference in Nairobi, Kenya, it was, yes, we can do this. Or if I called and said, let's, um, let's bring a group of young men from Rikers Island and have them talk about the importance of not going down the path that will end you in, make, I'll get this word right, that you will end up in prison. Or if it's taking a group of kids from Fairview to Ghana because they, their world needed opening wider. And so I, I, I won't talk about the projects that I'm doing now, just in case you want to help. <laughs> so the project that a group of individuals, when I say I, it is a we, of working on one, I heard this program on um, KSKA about women at Rikers Island Prison being supported to write a lullaby for their child. And I am just, Alaska did, no, maybe not. I will just call you up on the phone. So I called Carnegie Hall that was running the program and I said, we should do this in Alaska. And they said, Alaska? And I said, Alaska. And so I went out and talked to the uh, superintendent and the idea is to bring musicians and inmates at the prison and the musicians will help the inmates write a lullaby for their children while they're serving time. It is so exciting that I've seen the, the process and to have the women at Highland have this opportunity, it's amazing. The other project is Camp Kaleidoscope. And it's a cross-cultural immersion program where kids in our community can learn about each other's culture through the arts. That's in June. And then last, we are doing an Anchorage Cultural Summit. You know, there's lots of talk about we have 97 uh, 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 cultures in our city, et cetera, et cetera. And so my question was, so what do we do about it? How do we bring south to east, east to west, and have a conversation. Anchorage is a great city. We can make it even better by finding ways to uh, come together in our commonalities 
and making a plan, an action plan of how we can make Anchorage a more inclusive community where we have our 97 languages of parents know the rest of our community. So to the committee who I said before who nominated me and to Carol and to all of you, I, everybody's already said it's an honor. So I might as well go on. I do feel like going on. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll stop yet. And if I call you, call me back. Thank you for this honor. I appreciate it. And to my son, who's been a part of this journey for 40, he's older than I. <laughs> thank you for coming and supporting me. And thank you to my friends who are here to support me.